For a 10% discount from Regston, simply enter the discount code HORPIUS at the checkout. Well, hello, and it's Hopius Maximus back again with another video, and this one's got a little bit extra on it. Uh, it's still got the finds, you know, the Roman finds, the medieval silver hammered coins, uh, medieval artifacts, the members' finds. It's got all of that. But this time around, when I was out in a field just outside where I live in Dorchester, I found a bronze figurine. And. Uh, it turns out to be Roman and it's unusual and it's a really personal thing and I get just as much enjoyment out of finding something like that than I do finding a silver hammered coin. So I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, feel free to leave a comment at the end. I hope you enjoy it. Bye for now. <laughs> well, I'm sure we've all uh, had these finds where they're on the surface and this blew my ears off. And uh, I've already picked it up and had a look and put it back down. But that gives it away, the ridge and the slope. That is pot leg, a bronze pot leg. I've got a few of those so I'll put the others up next to it and you can see right on the surface. Well there you go. And this is the bronze pot leg it's from a cooking vessel or a cauldron it has the classic ridges on the outside, it's got the angled base and this type dates from medieval to post medieval so it's around 1350 to 1750. Um, these pot legs come in various shapes and sizes and I'll show you some of the others that I've found but I always like to find them. And there's the collection there. Well, I've done a running repair, there's the broken shaft. So I've disconnected the battery, taken the broken bit off. Uh, just push those in a bit so it doesn't catch on the, on the locking latch. And battery attached and pushed in there. This might be tight, but Yep, there we are. It's a bit shorter, but I'm back in action. And I'll have to buy myself a new shaft. Right, on we go. I mean, this is mud. And, oh, I think I've lost it already. Just bear with me. There. I think that maybe 
<laughs> if you can see that there, I think that could be a good quarter. So I'll have to get it cleaned up. Well, this hasn't actually been cut, so it's not a cut quarter farthing. It's broken, so it's just part of a medieval silver penny. Uh, it's a pity, but a lot of the coins we find get damaged. But it is what it is. Do you know just shouted something? What? Did I hear right? What did you say? Really? <laughs> you and your religious medallions. <laughs> Hang on, I was walking there, you were all shaking. Oh, you're still shaking. <laughs> Hang on, let's put this down. It's broken, but that is a Roman. Look. <laughs> let's get in the light. Definitely is. Oh, yes. Well done, so I found one and you found one. Yeah, that cleaned up with a bit of wax on, you get some detail on that. Well done, get in there. Hey, hey. Woohoo! Are you happy now? <laughs> I am very happy. <laughs>
I'll just come through a gate and uh, it's a bit remote where we are and there's been nothing but rubbish but I've got a signal by the gate and normally signals by the gate are just modern rubbish but look at that, that's bronze and it's a figure oh, I don't know I'm definitely going to get that checked out because that looks like it's got a bit of age to that very heavy interesting and we go from this to this and I'm just blown away by this find I mean let's face it it's not every day you find a bronze Roman figurine it's been away for conservation so it's now stabilized which is great and it's very very heavy for its size when I first saw it through the mud I thought it was medieval because the sort of pattern through the mud reminded me of chainmail armour but when it was cleaned off uh, it's been confirmed that it's Roman and that what I thought was chainmail it's actually thought to be trying to represent wool or fur and it's a long toga um, they say it's a toga because you can see over the left shoulder where the folds are, where it's draped over and it's belted. Uh, there's another few st strange things about it. Um, the head is said to be Celticized in appearance, which is unusual. And the hairstyle on the front, it's a dotted decoration with a straight cut fringe. Um, the hair on the back of the head looks like it's plaited. Opinions seem to indicate that this was either a figurine that represented a Roman god that was dropped, or possibly that it was a figurine which was intentionally buried as a votive offering to a deity. Uh, normally they do votive offerings as a thanks for bringing good fortune, or if they were trying to get some favours granted by the deity. Uh, I think it looks stunning. <laughs> and I must admit, it sends shivers down my back when I look at it, because it would have meant a great deal to somebody, whoever owned it. So I actually feel honoured to have found it. I've saved it from the ground. And if I hadn't found it, there's no doubt about it. Over the centuries, it would have decayed to nothing. So yes, the detecting god smiled upon me when I got this signal. Well, the field is absolutely saturated. I've got a 60s signal in the hot and it's loud so it's near the surface. So the odds are it's going to be rubbish, but we'll have a look. Oh dear. Well, cool. It's so bad. <laughs> well, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. I'm there. And that's well it's thin, it's got a curve to it. Oh god, this is impossible. Right. Got a little toothbrush here. I should come armed with a toothbrush all the time, but I don't. Let's see if the squirty does anything. 
Oh, there's a cap on it. So well planned, and I can't even get the cap off because of the mud. Right. Looks very unprofessional this, but that. I can see design on that, I'm sure. Don't want to drop it, might not find it again. I think that could be a little hammered. We'll find out later when I get it cleaned up. Now, on my last video, I found this item. I was puzzled by what it was and the markings. I had a couple of comments as to what the item was and what the marks may be. And so there's a special thanks to Susan Bates for pointing me in the right direction. It could be the cover from a padlock, but the interesting bit for me is the actual markings on it. They are registered designs of patent marks that used a diamond shape in the design. And due to the diamond markings on my find and the charts that I found online, I found out the following information. The number at the very top indicates the class of material, what the goods are made of. In this case, it has the number one, which indicates is for a metal object. The letter directly underneath that mark indicates the year of registration, which on mine is the letter I. To the right point of the diamond is a number which is the day number and mine reads 23 for the 23rd and the left point of the diamond reads the letter M which represents the month and the chart states M is for June and the bottom of the diamond has a number which refers to the amount of bundles. I'm not sure what's meant by that but Anyway, the letters RD in the middle of the mark simply stand for the word registered. So, I found something out that I didn't know before I found it. And here we have our members finds again. Uh, let's see what we've got this time round. Well, let's travel back in time to the Iron Age and have a look at this Durotrigues Westerham type Celtic silver stator. The obverse shows the laurel wreath and crescents that represent a portion of the head of Apollo. The reverse shows a very Celtic style horse with a single pellet below at the six o'clock position and several pellets above. And this Celtic stator dates 58 to 45 BC. And this is a very nice example of an Elizabethan hammered silver coin. It's an Elizabeth I silver sixpence. It shows the bust of Elizabeth facing left with the rose behind her head and on the reverse, above the shield, is the date 1594. The coin also has the Woolpack mint mark shown at the top on both sides of the coin, and the Woolpack indicates coins from the sixth issue, which encompasses the coins from 1594 to 1596. And he is a very nice Mary Groat, and a Groat was worth four pennies. We don't find many Mary coins, so this really is a great find. Mary was Queen of England and Ireland from July 1553 until her death in 1558. She was also known as Bloody Mary by her Protestant opponents, and during her five-year reign, Mary had over 280 religious dissenters burnt at the stake. And this is a Roman zoomorphic brooch. It's copper alloy and it's in the form of a crested dolphin. This style of zoomorphic dolphin brooch dates between 100 to 200 AD. 
And that's it for this time round, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, like, and I'll see you on the next video.